live. I'm Colton Woods. And we're, we're actually going live on both pages here. Yep. So if you click over from my page onto Colton Woods Horsemanship, you'll see our live feed there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Colton and I are here to wrap up our first day here at uh, Mallee Quarter Horses in Paris, Kentucky. Yeah, there we go. Uh, wrapping up our first day of our ranch horsemanship and cow working clinic here. And, uh, you know, this was, this was a first of, and it's always, how do I want to say, it's always a little bit of a risk teaching the first time with somebody else. Yep. There's, you'll probably notice there's not a lot of clinicians that teach clinics with other clinicians. Um, and it's kind of, I don't know, as a clinician, to me it's obvious why, because teaching styles are so very different um, that, you know, we can oftentimes could potentially run into clashes of teaching styles and things like that, but um, I don't know. I had a blast. It was a really, really fun time today. Yeah, we've got a great group of folks and their horses out here, and um, you know, working working side by side, Colton was was really cool. Uh, I hope we get the chance to do this absolutely again. Um, I look forward to doing that. It's nice coming from, as most of you know, I'm a little bit more of a dressage queen, right? <laughs> um, with with certainly uh, quite a bit of a Western background. So with the cow working and such, that's not anything that to me is is brand new. Uh, it's just something I don't get to do very often. So to be able to come to this, I know you've got more cow working experience than I and quite a bit more uh, Western experience, at least as of recent, sure. um, than what I have. So... Um, being able to meld those two ideas oh, yeah. together, you know, to me was great. Uh, I, I really, I really enjoyed that. So, um, and you guys know with these daily or almost daily videos, I'm kind of a microphone hog. So there was, <laughs> there was some times I would get rolling and I would catch myself and I'd say, damn it, Colton, just slap me next time I do that. You know, don't let me interrupt you like that. But I've got that verbal impulsivity, you know, um, that. I've decided to put to work with these videos, you know, if it wasn't for that, I'd need some sort of therapy or something, I guess, I don't know, <laughs> but, um, and I know you've been, you've been doing more videos recently as yeah, well, yeah, right, sure so have. you could talk to folks, that, the folks here on your page uh, have, have watched those videos, and I definitely recommend folks here on, on my page, uh, click over to Colton Woods Horsemanship and check out those videos that he's got. Tell me about some of those that you've been doing. I've caught a couple of them, but I, I won't lie, I don't get to catch them all. You bet. Yeah, we started um, a new little concept with our videos. Um, one of them is a Monday morning series that I'll, every morning I'm going to be posting and have for the last several weeks. A little bit of motivational stuff. Some of it will be horsemanship oriented, some of it will just be life, general advice. And a lot of times it's quotes or one line of advice that you might get from somebody like Patrick himself or something you pick up at a clinic or just something to make you feel good and get your week started right on the right foot. So we started that as well as a series called Horseman's Journey, which is there's a lot of instructional videos out there on how exactly how to perform certain things. But when we look at what it really, at least in my own opinion, and you may agree or disagree with this, but what really makes a horseman is far more than just the actual education of your horses. Mm. And that it goes into how you care for your horses, how you manage your horses, um, anything from the breeding to feeding to educating to selling and marketing. There's so much that goes into it. When I had some time to spend on the road right when I was out of school, one of the coolest things I got to do that I really enjoyed and that made me do this little series was that people – there was some young students coming up from high school going into college and they weren't sure like, hey, should I go learn from somebody and get in a barn setting or should I go get this four-year degree that my parents want me to get? Gotcha. And they're like, well, I understand I can get a four-year equine degree, but and I did that. I went through the University of Kentucky and got a four-year equine degree. And so the parents were like, well, my kid should go to college. And I'm like, you know, just trying to help provide some guidance on what I thought was what my experience was going through the University of Kentucky's equine program. And so that was really cool because it wasn't anything directly hands-on because at the point I was helping train horses at the same time, but people were looking for advice outside of just the actual education of their horses mm. and the overall journey because 
it's gonna you, it takes you a lifetime to learn a lifetime that was another that was the line that i used i think for last week's monday motivation yes and right, so right. you know it, you can only learn so much and so when you look at people that are later into their career they know more because they've lived more and so being at this certain stage we get to talk about different aspects of the horsemanship journey and i'm sharing really raw what i'm going through in terms of building a business learning from young horses learning from more seasoned horses problem solving and just the whole nine yards in general on what it's what wherever it takes me i you know we don't have a little genie lamp to tell me where i'm going to be in the next 50 years but at least we're going to kind of share with you guys what we're going through some decisions we're making on our end and it's really neat with the social media, like how we can bring it together, share those experiences, and still learn from each other. And today we're in Kentucky. You're headed to Pennsylvania. And normally we wouldn't, you know, if it was way back in the day, we couldn't keep in touch. Right, exactly. It would just be one of those things. But now it's a phone call. It's a Facebook message. It's such an easy thing to keep in touch and learn from other people that you've never met. Right. So um, that's what we're trying to do because we're, we're all on our own journey. And so if we can kind of share with each other, who knows what we'll learn. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. That's so true. And that's, that's awesome. I'm going to have to go back, you know, when I get a minute and, um, when I get a few minutes, go back and, and kind of catch up on some of those videos that you've done that I've missed. Um, and that is, that is awesome. It, it's, to me, that's the whole reason behind starting these videos that, that I've been doing as well, mm -hmm. you know, and I know you and I, I think did the first collaborative we did feed yeah. that I that I did and I think that you did as Absolutely, well yep. you know um, it, this is a great way for us to be able to reach out and keep in touch with all of you um, through you know through cyberspace or through <laughs> the magic of Facebook land or whatever you know it's it's pretty awesome that way um, and you know like my almost daily question and answer you know it's it's spawned totally off of the questions and answers that I'm constantly getting uh, through social media, through email, mm -hmm. through text message, through things like that. Um, I thought, you know, if somebody's if somebody's asking that question, chances are there's more people that need that answer than Absolutely. just the one that's asking that question. You know, so uh, to be able to share these experiences, and I love, and and you guys on my page know that um, that uh, I try to share interactions with as many professionals as possible, you know, um, because of exactly what you said. There's a lot that goes into this. You know, there's a lot that goes into this life. There's a lot that goes into these businesses. There's a lot that goes into uh, this horsemanship, yep. you know. Um, yeah, so that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm definitely going to check in with that. So, again, gang, here on my page, um, please make sure you stop over and visit Colton Woods Horsemanship and, and check in for that. And there's there's a neat little deal now with the – it's probably been there for a while. I don't know. I'm not very tech savvy. But a um, neat little deal where when each of us go live, uh, you can get notifications even on your mobile devices, your cell phones, your iPads, your – watch I don't, I don't know i don't know what <laughs> they the have now you know those. yeah absolutely <clears throat> um well, so that you don't miss the page, live version for the guys on my page that haven't seen your stuff why don't you give them i'm really familiar with your videos um why don't you give them just a little bit you've mentioned the daily or almost daily videos mm -hmm. but just mention just a little bit about the q a that you've been doing mm. and how they can submit some questions to you yeah so like uh so i'm going to kind of redirect my view over here um to Colton's phone. It's awesome, we do this stuff through cell phone, you know. Um, but yeah, so uh, I do almost daily. I say almost daily because I live on the road, right? Folks don't always understand what that means when I say I live on the road. But I literally spend. Last year was 340 days on the road teaching. Well, you know. Uh, so I live on the road. Working here through our cell phones is a great way to be able to keep in touch. But uh, there are some places where I just don't have reception. I don't have cell service. I don't have um, Wi-Fi or any of that stuff. So it's not an everyday thing as much as I would love for it to be. We've got, I think I've got a hundred or so videos up though awesome. so far, which is That's which awesome. is pretty good. And we try to upload them to our YouTube channel and that sort of thing for future reference. But the big thing is that folks will email us. They'll send me private messages or direct messages. Um, 
through Facebook, through our YouTube channel, through our Instagram account mm. now. I'm not techie, and I feel like I have to be techie in this <laughs> world, and, and I don't know. I feel like I feel miserably at it, but you guys keep talking to me, so it's awesome. I love it. Um, but yeah, so folks will submit their questions, and uh, some of them are very direct, specific questions, and some of them are a little bit more vague, mm. kind of theoretical questions. So the theoretical sort of questions um, are fairly easy for me to answer in a setting like this. Go out and sit in the pasture with some horses behind us and chat about horses, right? And so I, I talk about, I, I call it talking about horses. That's the videos on our YouTube channel. Um, but there are some questions that people ask that are way more specific, right? And they zone in on, I've got to be able to show you this piece or that piece. And so we try to catch clips at our clinics uh, and try to catch very specific moments where I might be mic'd up and talking mm. to the camera live for things like that, hoping to do more of those as we go. But as you can imagine, in a clinic setting, it's kind of hard to break up the time, you know, aside from the students that are there. And, and focus in on individual questions that way. So um, it, it's kind of half days off or evenings like this where Colton and I can ride together and do things like that where we can answer um, the most specific questions that way. So, but yeah, if you guys are on Colton's page and you wanna pop over and, and visit Patrick King Horsemanship on our Facebook page, send us some messages. You know, your, your questions are what fuels uh, the videos that I do, your questions are the reason that I started the videos in the first place. So, um, enough about that stuff, right? Yeah. Let's talk about this clinic. You know, yeah. we've been having fun uh, today, all day, uh, working with this gang, talking first. Uh, we started with horsemanship and Good. footfall and timing and that sort of thing. Uh, really getting folks specific, you yeah. know, really thinking about what's going on underneath them. Um, we went from there into kind of task-oriented things with right. that. You know, Colton had this really cool exercise um, where the riders, their task was to knock a cone down with their horse and then have their horse stand the cone back up. Um, that's something over here on my page, Patrick King Horsemanship, I shared a video of Byron doing that with his uh, black and white paint horse. Mm. Um, she just walked up and owned that, she right? Did. She uh, probably won the first round of competition under 10, in seconds. seconds. Yeah, it was yeah, quick. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, the video that I shared was her second time at it, and she was sort of messing around a little bit. She wasn't she too sure she wanted to do it the second time, so it's probably a 40-second clip, whereas <laughs> the first time she did it, I mean, it was it was so fast, I didn't even get a chance to video it. Um, it <laughs> Yeah, she was right on it. So yep. that was that was pretty slick. That was a neat exercise, though. A lot of the other horses kind of struggled with that. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it was interesting. I'd, I'd never thought of doing anything like that. Uh, and we did some things like um, walking down a log. A friend of mine, Lori, if you're watching, um, you were kind of the inspiration for that. I know that's an exercise that Pat Puckett had given to you. So that's something... Thanks, Pat. Uh, that's something that we decided to incorporate today into that task. Riders were walking down a ground pole, uh, landscaping timber is what mm -hmm. it is, uh, and the task was to keep the left feet on the left side and the right feet on the right side and walk the whole way down that pole. And that was interesting. A couple riders got that. A couple riders really struggled yeah. with that. Their horses conceptually had a real hard time oh, yeah. with that, you know. Um, we worked some gates, and then um, and then we did that mirroring uh, exercise. Oh, was, you want to talk a little bit about that one? Yeah, absolutely. Like Patrick was saying, we did a lot with getting the people to understand where the horse's feet were, and then uh, Patrick took over with the mirror imaging, and it was a really really neat thing because we we're getting these folks ready to work cattle. And so we had individuals act as the cow, so they'd be dictating the pace and when they'd turn or when they'd travel off forward again, and really getting to understand of how to set their horse up. So we had been building on understanding where those inside hind or where the hind feet were first is where we, where we started with the hind feet and then built up to understanding on how to manipulate the shoulders, how to connect those reins to the feet and be very intentional about where we were placing them where the horse's weight was distributed, whether, and for this case with working cattle, they'd be more rocked over their hocks a little bit. You don't want them bled too far forward. Um, 
so the cow would beat them. So yeah, it was a really, really neat time to watch some people that, you know, you essentially, we got to give the participants a bit of a job. Mm-hmm. And instead of getting so solely focused on, I have to put the left foot here, which was the cone exercise, because we're saying, hey, you need to knock the cone over with just the front feet. So they're sitting there trying to pick these feet up and place them very intentionally on knocking this cone over and then realizing, okay, I got it over, but how the heck am I going to stand it back up? Mm-hmm. And so now we're like, all right, well, let's set your horses up. They know what it feels like to make these turns and how to rock back and back up and get over your hocks a little bit. And let's pay attention to your partner here because they're the cow. They're, you have to follow their lead just like you'd follow the cow and then setting their horses up, which is what we're really getting around to talk about today, and setting these horses up and then letting these horses kind of find the answer. Yeah. And so that's, I know we're kind of coming full circle here with mm-hmm. that and helping these horses that um, some horses needed a lot of help. They weren't too balanced. Um, and so they needed, the riders needed to be a little more handy. And Patrick talked really, um, did a thorough job on talking about how to help these horses balance, not get too heavy on the forehand, but also be right there ready to be able to place those feet where they needed to go. Because other horses that were, if for this case, they were a little broader in the chest, they were more balanced all around in how they were built they were capable of getting out of their own way, whereas these other horses, they're just kind of klutzes. Yeah, <laughs> And right. so they were going to kind of fall over their own legs. Like, you know, the 17-3 warm blood, that's a four-year-old, like she just has a tough time trying to get those feet in the proper right. section. Right. Um, I can say that because it's my fiance's horse. So <laughs> if she's watching this, I'm probably going to hear about it when we get out of this pasture. But, you know, that just it. is what it is. Is You have a large horse with a lot of leg with not a lot of life experience essentially right. they need some help in making those transitions whereas if you have a horse that says oh i'm very intentional about where i'm going to be placing my feet then you can set it up and say hey we're going to go down here we're going to trot we're going to stop we're going to rock back a little bit and we're going to make this turn and you just set it up and you let those horses kind of experience it and so when we look at working cattle for tomorrow, we want to get those horses to be a little more responsible for riding that cow Absolutely. and making these decisions on their own and not being so broke to the rider, which is something I hear recently is that some of these cow horse guys, they don't want your horse, they can be too broke, which yeah. I thought was interesting because all of a sudden when you have a horse that has some cow sense to them, if they're super, super broke to the rider, then they rely more on the rider to tell them what to do than they do on their natural instinct. Exactly. to rate the cow right and so it's we get them broke enough to listen to us so that we can direct their energy and kind of provide them a bit of guidance mm-hmm. but then also give them the confidence to say hey don't be afraid to try enough to take initiative Absolutely. and say hey yeah, go there's... out there and give it a shot it's mm-hmm. okay if you mess up because i'm here i'm going to help you got to make the turn we're going to it may not be pretty the first couple of times but we're going to be here to help you and then as they start to figure out how to make these maneuvers then we're really headed in the right direction. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, absolutely. And that overtraining them, you know, they, they just become... Mechanic. They become mechanical. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. They become mechanical and um, and they lose... Hell, they lose the reason we ride them. Mm. You know, we, we ride because of the nature of the horse and yeah. because of kind of what they have to bring to the table. And when they become computers like that or machines like that, automatons... Uh, they lose all that stuff. They're not yeah. bringing anything to the table, you yeah. know. They're they're just being kind of drug along and things mm-hmm. like that. And that's, um, uh, you can tell when the horse really enjoys their job. Yeah. You know, particularly a like, cattle can really bring out some big reactions or like some big expression in horses. You know, yeah. it's kind of frowned upon, but you might see a horse that might try to reach out and take a hold of a cow. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, in the arena, they just kind of do their thing and they're not too right. expressive. But all of a sudden, like someone might be really shocked that their horse comes mm-hmm. out there and is super interested in the cattle mm-hmm. or a flag or whatever the job is might be jumping yeah you know, yeah a horse might just really enjoy going over fences mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you kind of like brighten their world if you ride in the arena all the time i think you were talking about this the other day about just getting them outside absolutely and just absolutely. all of a sudden if you got a sticky horse just get them outside let them go mm-hmm. um within a controlled environment right and so but you kind of you can brighten those horses up and really kind of give them a little purpose to their work. Absolutely, they can get so dulled up and so sullen on the idea of principle, 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 principle. Um, you know, it, it's like I don't know. People who know me well know I'm terrible at math. I hate math, that sort of thing. I shouldn't say I hate it, but 
as a, as a strong word to use for it. But, you know, to me, numbers are, sure. I don't know, fairy tales. I can't wrap my <laughs> mind around numbers. It's all fake. Okay. And um, but, but if I've got to make change, that's something real, mm. right? If, I, if we've got to go count those cattle, if we've got to team up riders in a clinic, those are numbers. Those make sense to me Absolutely. in that sense. And it's very much the same way with a horse. You know, we can principle, 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 principle a horse to death sometimes literally, mm. um, without giving them a purpose. But when you give them a purpose, especially something that resonates with them, right? You, like you said, sometimes it's just jumping, sometimes it's cow working, sometimes it's trail riding, sometimes it's, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter. You know, when you give them something that really resonates with them, that brings, that brings out the nature, that brings out the individuality, that brings out you know, all the things that make the horse a good thing, That's you good. know, um, yeah, and that's what we need to do, you know. Yeah. So there's there's times when we've just got to get out of the arena and just go do something. And this video is totally going off of what we oh, had is. planned. Absolutely. This is what I love about working with like-minded professionals is that we can just sit down. We shouldn't have even put a title on this video. We, have we should have just said, it's it's Patrick and Colton bullshitting, talking <laughs> about life, right? I mean, because that's kind of what it comes down to, yeah. you know, talking about life, talking about horses. Uh, and sitting out here in the pasture, we had we had some brood mares and some babies behind us, and we sat down to do this, and they just left. So uh, <laughs> it's true. So you know, we tried yeah. giving you guys this awesome background of baby horses and that sort of thing, and it just kind of didn't work out. But we got this awesome sunset that you can't see, but you can catch the awesome orange glow on our fantastic horseman <laughs> complexions right now you Absolutely. know uh, i had to roll my sleeves up i was starting to get in the horseman's tan you know oh, you've yeah. seen the horseman's tan right they talk about a farmer's tan it's a t-shirt sleeve down the horseman's tan is kind of like from your cheeks to your chin and from your wrist forward from the oh, long sleeve shirts on you know oh, yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. so but um yeah, so anyway, the idea, the original idea of this video is we were going to talk about setting your horses up, kind of preparing them and allowing them to find those answers. That's a theme. Sorry, there's some gnats here thinking I taste sweet. Uh, there's There was a, quite a few horses today where that was the theme, getting the horses ready for what we were asking them to do, and, and a lot of it this afternoon as everything kind of came to a came to a culmination toward the end of the day. Um, preparing the horses for the mirroring exercise, yeah. getting ready for the cow working preparation that we were going to be doing. Um, so, again, I'm hogging the microphone, you know. So, um, talk to me a little bit about what you thought with that, about what you saw taking place with that. Well, I think one of the big things that we talked about, and that even Patrick and I mentioned just before we start this started, was that um, a lot of the work we did today was at the walk. There was a little bit of trot work. Um, even some horses, when we did the mirror imaging, they got a little left behind, so they might have had to hit the lope to catch up. But then they had to be just as ready to break it back down to a trot because with your cow work and everything, you know, when you get really detailed into it, when your horse goes from the trot to the lope, you better have a hit it hit at an extended trot. Yeah. If you hit that lope, your horse and you become very, very vulnerable to losing the cow because you've com your pot committed to that where they're at but a lot of the work we did today was at the walk and isolating the hind quarters and the front quarters isolating each individual foot as well as where the weight distribution was and breaking it that far down there was even some people that said oh like normally i have to come out and i really have to get my horse's feet moving because they're not with me but because we kept them so mentally in the game yeah. the horses never really got in a hurry and we s discussed with several of the people as we wrapped up for the evening about not getting in a hurry mm -hmm. and that um, you had a really good phrase and it was we were talking about about the quality versus the speed and how we did it um I'm not sure if that was something that was a one-liner that you pulled out there. Oh, yeah, but. yeah. So, yeah, that was, um, I, I give a lot of credit to my old uh, high school typing teacher, yeah. actually, who I don't know if he's ever ridden a horse or not, but he had this awesome line that uh, that sticks with horses, I think, really well. And he used to, I, I was the king of hunting and pecking on the typewriter, right, or on the keyboard. And uh, he used to you know with a little plastic <laughs> ruler that he carried and, and all that stuff but now he was pretty cool he was, he was an awesome fella but he used to say accuracy first and the speed will come yeah 
accuracy first and the speed will come and that's so true you know you get these horses set up right and uh, and they learn it right and then they can get quicker oh yeah or they can get slower or they can get sooner mm. or they can wait longer and they'll understand what their job is you know that was something that that Ray used to talk to us about all the time he would say uh, for those of you that don't know this Ray Hunt that I'm mentioning um, he used to say you know they learn what they live and mm. they learn it the way that they live it right so if every time we try to set our horse up for something, transition, a turn, a whatever, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, if we're rushed, if we're anxious, if we're hurried, if we're scattered, if we're unbalanced, that's what they're living, yeah. right? So that's what they're learning. So when we, uh, when we start asking horses for these things, if we set them up in that way, as far as they're concerned, that's how they're supposed to execute mm. these things, right? So... Uh, it's it's something that we need to keep in mind we have to set them up properly right and that's Excellent. something that we were talking about today you know lose the cow it doesn't matter it's lose the cow the yep. you can catch up later you know that's something that we we said i think you might have said it you know don't rush the turn you might have to rush after the turn yep. right but don't rush the turn set the horse up properly to go through it correctly and then maybe you might need to hustle mm -hmm. right and then eventually the horse will know that he needs to maybe do a little hustling yep. and he'll make the turn a little quicker but it'll be balanced because yeah. of how well he's been prepared yeah with that mirror imaging exercise it got pretty fun you know the first couple of people came out and they were they were just trying to figure out what we wanted them to do right, right. and then you get a couple groups deep and we had some good friends in there that they were getting pretty competitive with it and they were rushing the turns and so we said well forget about it you can catch up after just like you were right. saying but don't sacrifice your horse yeah. to get the, uh, get the job done. Like in this part, we're just working on the fundamentals with getting our horses set up. So mm -hmm. it's all good to get competitive because even if it's your buddy on his other horse that you're getting competitive with, it's going to get competitive with those steers when they want to get back to their friends too because they're going to challenge everybody. They're going to bring the game. Yeah, and they're you know they're a hundred. They're not going to sit there and look at you smiling and try to figure out what you're thinking they're just going to do what's natural to them and what they feel like they need to do mm -hmm. and it's going to get competitive with them but at the same time when you're teaching these uh green horses or horse you know they don't even have to be young horses they just have to be horses that don't quite understand what we're asking of them in this case mm -hmm. um don't rush it just be patient set it up for them if you feel like you know something we're talking about balance a lot today yeah. and balance and everything from their weight to the reins to just everything in general to even desensitizing on the biggest scale of them being very tolerant but also very respectful and prompt with what they were being asked of mm -hmm. and asking these horses to when you bring them down to these transitions and everything to um to not to not rush through it let them be very punctual let them be very pragmatic and uh, very intentional on how they do it that way when you get this stuff at the walk and you do it well, only a couple thousand times um, Something like that then you know You'd be able to speed it up a little bit and you, yeah. your horse isn't fried because we're gonna we'd stay at the walk in the trot for the most part today and The cattle might set the tempo tomorrow and Absolutely. they're not gonna really care how you know They're like well if I need to lope out to get back to my friends, you know, but Absolutely. we're gonna we're asking these folks like hey make your turn and then catch up absolutely and absolutely. be there for your horse so that was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah and that was something I, you know we started noticing i know colton noticed it i know i noticed it we started noticing more quality oh, yeah. in the work when they started slowing down you know we had a couple riders that of course when they're out there getting you know uh getting challenged and wanting to wanting to one up their friends and that sort of thing they kind of get to rushing right like people tend to do and um you know, it was interesting when they started to slow down, they started working that cow or working their partner, right? The partner was the mock cow in this exercise, but they started operating more like that swinging gate that we that talked about. Awesome and when they started getting in a hurry, it was like they were steering the Queen Mary around the arena, oh, yeah. right? I mean, they were they were steering them as tight as a 18 wheeler, They're right? I mean, they needed all the way absolutely. They needed yep. half the darned arena just to get that turn through there. Um, so uh yeah you know that's something that we tend to rush we tend mm -hmm. to hurry we want to get in the want to get it done you know and i think about that all the time that how how type a we all are yeah. you know 
And, I mean, if you think about it, as a horse person, as a rider, and if any of you think I'm wrong, please let me know, but as a horse person and as a rider, our aim is to control the mind, the body, the entire existence, basically, the entire life of another individual. Hmm. That's about as type A as you yeah. can get, right? Yeah. Like that's Control. that's that's like the gold trophy award for type A plus, hmm. you know? And so we're the type of people who want to get it done, we want to do something, we want to make this happen, we want to create this thing, we want to teach this skill. Um, I think everybody that's involved with horses, I think, is that way, or we wouldn't be involved with horses, right? Uh, and yet, the horse needs us to be the opposite. Yeah, we right? talked about that a little bit. And yeah. that some of the biggest learning that was going on was not when they were actually doing it in the actual physical forward motion of catching yeah. up to their friend or actually making the turn, but it was in the moments of like hesitation when yeah. they were weighing on their friend, hey, are they going to go forward? Are they going to make the turn and I need to follow? Absolutely. Or standing on the rail watching the next group go. Those horses kind of sat Absolutely. there and their ears cocked to the side and they cocked the leg and they started licking chew and they started to hang out. Started thinking. And they started to digest and synthesize and mm-hmm. soak on what we've been taught, like what the riders have been trying to explain to them. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't, mm-hmm. the learning wasn't actually in the moment of the turns. Like they had to go back and really kind of, ref- the horses needed time to reflect on what exactly just happened. Yes. And so that way they can come out tomorrow and be that much more sharp and a little more prepared right. for it. The learning happens after the experience. Yeah. The experience happens in the moment. But the learning mm. happens after that, That's you know, cool. and, and I, the more I think about it, the more I think, you know, we're, we're not trainers, right? You know, we're not teachers. It's the idea of training in this sense, though, at least the way we're doing it, right? Uh, training would, would imply that we're putting this into, mm-hmm. right? We're not doing that. We're helping to draw out. Absolutely. Right, we're helping to draw the good things out. So I feel like we're not trainers, we're not teachers. We're it, it's more we're facilitating the thing, whatever it is we want to have happen. Right, we want the horse to understand. We're not we're not pushing it into him. These are all things these horses know how to do. <laughs> They've known how to do it since they were an hour old. Right, oh, yeah. and and anybody that tells you this horse has to learn how to do a lead change, this horse has to learn how to canter, this horse has to learn how to trot balanced. If somebody's telling you that, they're just a damned idiot, you know? The horse has known how to do that since he was an hour old, unless he's got major neurological problems, right? <laughs> and if that's the case, we're not teaching him anything anyway, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's our job to help bring that to the surface, you know, to nurture that, to help mm. the horse understand that that's what we're looking for. We can't teach that, you know? We can't, are you kidding? We walk on two legs. We don't know what the hell it's like to walk on four legs, <laughs> let alone do a flying lead change, right? We know what it feels like when the horse does it. And so we can facilitate. We can help them to balance. We can help them to get prepared. We can help them to understand that when we do these certain things, we can manipulate his body in a certain way to help these other things come through. Mm. That's not teaching. That's bringing out, yeah. you know? That's facilitating his discovery, really, you know? Uh, it's not teaching him anything. Mm. You know, in in that sense, right? But uh, that's me stealing the microphone again. See, you guys know I ramble. We get this little smiley, laughy emoji just floated across the screen. You know, that's, I'm sure that's somebody that knows me well and knows how much I just nerd out about you know little theoretical things like that. You know, the philosophy side of this stuff. Uh, maybe I'm getting old. I don't know. I don't know. But. Uh, so yeah, today's today's been a great look. There's some hearts. I got some hearts floating right here. Hearts? No, you don't have any no. hearts floating. Oh, it says you got people watching, but they're not they're not they're floating not, hearts. Yeah, it's all right. Gang over there on Colton Woods Horsemanship, he <laughs> wants some hearts floating by. Somebody do. They're not loving you, man. No, they're not loving you. Well, I got, I got some more. I got more stuff. Yeah, look at yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're gonna have to yes. pick up the pace tomorrow when we get back <laughs> on here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, another one. Another call, big yeah, one. calling the reinforcements. Absolutely. Yep. So. Yep. Mom, I need, I need hearts. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. It's whatever. Uh, so, um, yeah. So, see, they, they keep coming up. Yeah. They keep, I love you guys. You guys are the best. 
Up there. Okay. You got oh, one. There we go. You got one. Was that your mom? Can we check that? Uh, well, I think we'll look at it after we <laughs> There we go. Up. There right. we go. We'll look at see who said that. But uh, no, so this is great. I don't think I've ever actually just sat here in front of this damn thing and rambled for all of you guys to hear. Uh, my friends are there. Hearts from me, Judy. That's awesome. Great to, great to have you joining us. Uh, yeah, perfect. Hearts from Judy. That's awesome. So, uh, oh, this is awesome. And and like we said, you know, this kind of interaction stuff here with you guys and with us, uh, because we live states away, and we, I mean, our lives are lived the whole country apart half mm -hmm. of the time because of you teaching and me teaching and things like that. Uh, but having the opportunity to bring this to you guys is awesome. I mean, it's it's priceless uh, to to be able to do that. You know, no, I've been looking to forward to this so. for quite a while since Absolutely. I think we discussed it back in March. and I think so. That was when we first got the ball rolling, and yeah. I can't tell you, I've been looking forward to it since then, and it's hard yeah. to believe you're already first day through. we got tomorrow to go. And, I know, right? And I think you're headed to Pennsylvania. It's a, yeah, it's all done tomorrow, so. and then I and then I drive to Pittsburgh. So, yeah. But um, Pittsburgh's going to be fun. I get a few days with my daughter. It's her birthday. Oh, awesome. So, that yeah, great. So that's going to be fun. So. Um, but I was, I was, I was looking really forward to this, so we're going to have to do more of this. And these videos, you know, I mean, we get, uh, we go, what's this? Peggy says, we're soaking this up. So, <laughs> I love it, I love it. Um, because Colton and I are soaking this up too, it's like reality TV. We're stars on reality <laughs> TV, man. That's awesome. Yeah, no, that's pretty not amazing. so much. Uh, NBC will not be calling us. No, I don't, I don't reckon you know. so. It's like survivor horsemanship. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> that would be something. Uh, that would be something. That. Well, I'm sure there's gonna be a couple live videos tomorrow too <laughs> when we bring the cattle up yeah, into the arena. It'll be survivor horsemanship <laughs> yeah, tomorrow. Be, we'll no doubt. To it tomorrow, no doubt. So. Yeah. Um, it's, but. I know we'll be doing a couple live tomorrow during the yeah. clinic with bringing the cows up and getting everybody kind of settled on them. And yeah, absolutely. Hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to talk some of the participants into into joining in on that. I don't know. You guys let us know. Would you like to see some of our clinic participants uh, join in on these live broadcasts? We thought about the lunchtime deal. We did. Um, I don't know. Maybe getting some, some auditors or some clinic participants to kind of be commentators. On oh, some live video. I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing these ideas out here. So if you guys think that's a cool idea, let us know. Um, a little TV host show. Yeah, right? For the tomorrow. <laughs> Absolutely. That that could be, I don't know, that could be cool. It could be dangerous. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I better watch what I say and be careful of who I pick on from RFD TV <laughs> and stuff like that. I don't know. But, um, yeah, the PC tends to get turned off. Uh, at a lot of these clinics, mm. you know, um, the political correctness, you know, we talk about the real stuff, things like that. But anyway, we're not going to do that on these live broadcasts because then you guys will share the video with the, you know, the people were bad mouthed and it's, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Are you kidding? That doesn't, that doesn't happen. Somebody just asked a question not too long ago on here about rider biomechanics. Uh, and that's something that does come up quite a bit at the clinics. We talk about the rider biomechanics and how we need to sit and how we need to be. Because your horse, uh, I mean, you think about it. You, the horse gets 80% of the message through your seat, right? If your seat's garbage, yeah. not, that it's a, not that it makes you a bad person as a rider, but if you're not a good rider, right? If yeah, you don't have a good self -awareness. seat. self-awareness. Yeah, absolutely. So not, if you're not self-aware yeah. and your seat is all over the place, then 80% of your message is scattered and all over the place. So, uh, is your phone dying? It's don't trying to. Did your phone die? Well, uh, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, but that's part of the, the rider uh, biomechanics to me, you know. And so a lot of times we see some, I won't lie, we see some disciplines. We see some training methods that totally just abandon the idea of biomechanics and, and soundness from the horses and things like that. And I know for myself at these clinics, I'm not shy about calling stuff out like that. You know, I think in this industry, in this world, there's too much of being scared to talk about reality, you know, for fear of hurting somebody's feelings. And my philosophy has always been, and again, you guys correct me if I'm wrong, I'd rather break your heart than your neck. So if you're doing something stupid, I'm going to call you out on it. Now, if you're doing something because you don't know, that's one thing. Absolutely. But if you're just doing something dumb, I 
mean, we see a lot of that. You know, oh, we yeah. see a lot of stuff that it's just dumb. <laughs> but but it's because human ego gets involved and things like that. You know. Um, anyway, so so I don't I don't mind calling people out on that. But so that might come out if we do some live videos. We got to be careful. But it's real. It's yeah, real. People need to hear it. This is true. Well, this is true. More more of the more of the real stuff. Anyway, so gang, um, thanks so much for joining in with our ramblings this evening. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Not the direction either one of us expected these videos to go. You're getting lots of new good stuff on your yeah. page over there, by the way. I think that so. was my mom. Was it your mom? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Look, there's a heart. It must have been. Yeah, must have been. It had to have been. So that, that's great, though. That's good. Um, we love you, mom. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this this video did not take the the direction we thought it was going to. I really enjoyed the direction oh, it went though, great. and I look forward to doing this more tomorrow. Um, maybe we'll check in a couple times tomorrow. That could be kind of fun. Check in a couple Let's times tomorrow. Um, check in with you guys. If you've got questions, send them to us over here, at Colton Woods Horsemanship. Over here, Patrick King Horsemanship. Send us your questions. Post them in the comment section below these videos. That video, that video. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, maybe tomorrow we'll get a chance to answer some specific questions with the horses and riders that we have here. Or maybe if we end sooner than we did today, because today we ended like two and a half hours later than we thought we were going to. Uh, maybe we'll climb on some horses and, and do some talking yeah, that way. Yeah, and if you guys have questions for the clinic participants, or for maybe people that are sitting on the fence about how they might be seeing it, let us know. Put those in the comments below as well. Whether it's a question for Patrick, myself, the both of us, or for someone that's actually here. That's then, awesome. Even if you don't know who's here, you could just say, hey, pick somebody, and maybe we'll grab them out and just could get interesting you know say hey we just got a question for you and throw them up on a live video yeah let's do it i like it awesome so awesome add those below too guys if you have those absolutely absolutely all right gang again thank you so much for taking time out of your evening this what have we got on for like six hours now i don't even know <laughs> oh it's a beautiful what evening. time it, it is it is so, so colton's phone is gonna die but um i think we're gonna sit out here and chill out with the broodmares and the babies for a little while yeah. before we go in uh, but, uh, gang, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, check back tomorrow. Check back every day. Are you kidding? Colton's posting stuff almost every day. I think almost every, or is We're it every day? Just about every day. Just We're about trying, every day? Trying okay. to get around everything. And cool. Be sure that if you're either on the Colton Woods Horsemanship page, go across like Patrick King Horsemanship. If you like them, guys, when we go live tomorrow in the next couple of days, um, for the sessions, you'll get the notifications when we go live. So mm -hmm. we can't tell you that's going to be a particular time. A lot of times some interesting stuff will pop up at random times during the clinic. Mm -hmm. And we've gone live today several times on each right. page. So be sure you like both pages so that you get those notifications tomorrow when we're amidst the clinic and we find something really cool to share with you guys. Absolutely. We're going to have a blast. So you guys keep sending in your questions. Keep checking in. We're going to keep talking about horses, right? Sounds yeah. great. <laughs> Thanks so much, gang. Appreciate it, guys.